James says, a complete asset inventory is your biggest asset. Who is James? James has almost 20 years of asset management experience in the areas of property management, space management, operations and maintenance, capital planning and project management, and energy. He has worked in both facilities organizations and the software industry with proven results in both. Combining both experience and innovation, James always looks to push the status quo to take your organization to the next level. Are your processes clunky? Do you have people in the wrong role? Does your software answer the questions that matter? Ask James, and maybe it will be the next topic for James Says. Welcome to James Says. This is the second installment of the James Says video series. Uh, if you have seen my first video, welcome back. If you haven't had a chance to check out that first video, definitely go check it out. Uh, it talks a little bit about the audience that I'm trying to reach with this video series, and it has a pretty cool topic that I think is worth a look. So definitely go check that out. So the topic for this video is James says a complete asset inventory is your biggest asset. So why would it make a statement like that? Because I feel like the information stored in a complete asset inventory is an ROI force multiplier, right? It is the common denominator across all pillars of facilities management to include real estate portfolio, space management, operations and maintenance, capital planning and project management, and energy. It is the common denominator that goes across all pillars. So many of you, when you think of asset management or you think of collecting asset data, probably still have that tunnel vision of asset data is so that you can bring it to operations and maintenance so that you can perform PM or do your preventive maintenance tasks. If this is you and you're still kind of thinking this way, I made this video to take off those blinders. PM is an important part. I'm not going to say that preventive maintenance isn't important. It is an important part, but I would almost argue that it's not even the most important part of operations and maintenance when, it, when you're talking about the data stored in an asset inventory. And so let's actually take each pillar one by one and let's explain the ROI or the benefits that you'll get by having a complete asset inventory. So let's start with capital planning. And you're probably thinking, asset management, capital planning, why are you going? Well, I'm going there. It's a very important part of why you would want to have a complete asset inventory. So typically when you think about uh, capital planning, you think about trying to get information or enough information so you can make strategic plans and be able to budget and analyze kind of your vision for facilities for the future, right? And a lot of people do this um, by basically uh, using a bunch of calculators, right? So you're using various coefficients and uh, various breakdowns of a building and for what the building's used for and how long it's been around and how it's deteriorating and where it's located to basically come up with some number that tells you the condition of that facility, which then in turn relates to uh, dollars, right? To say, this is how I need to budget for my facilities going forward. And that's all well and good. And that gives you an idea and it gives you information, uh, but it doesn't give you anything that you can act on. That's the difference. When you do a strategic plan, and ultimately, when you put that plan into motion and you go and ask for approval for money or budgets or to push forward a certain project or to do whatever, what are you acting on? Are you acting on a number? Or are you acting on, here is a list of assets or a list of items that we need to address, and here's why. If you go to building ABC, whatever it is, it has carpet in it that is 12 years old that should have only lasted 10 years. We can go this direction, this direction, or this direction, depending upon what carpet we want to replace it with, and this is how much it's going to cost per square foot. There is a chiller in the basement of that uh, facility that's providing the cooling uh, to the whole building. It's already four years beyond its useful life. We can replace it a number of different ways, and here is what it's going to cost, and so on and so on and so forth. You are actually providing a, a guide to the people that are doing strategic planning 
based on real data, which are real assets that you can go out and touch and say, this is specifically the asset we need to address in the next two years. So let's talk about operations and maintenance a little bit. I mentioned in the beginning of the video that a complete asset inventory will help when it comes to preventive maintenance. And that's obvious. I think it's pretty straightforward. But some other areas where this data is really beneficial when it comes to operations and maintenance is in the areas of asset warranty. So if you're tracking all the information you need tied to each asset, you won't go out and needlessly use your resources when an asset is under warranty and it needs to be fixed. Right? It also helps you with root cause. So when you go out and actually are, are working in front of an asset, whether it be a piece of equipment or uh, some area within a facility, if you're identifying the asset that's being worked on, it helps you to identify where problems may be coming from. And you can start to establish trends, right? And so those trends could be not just uh, the, the trends related to how the building is being maintained or how it is breaking down, but it could also be trends related to the types of assets themselves, right? Whether that be a certain type of asset or a certain manufacturer of a certain asset. So it might be that uh, your facility or your, your standard for all of your facilities is to buy assets of a certain type from a certain manufacturer. And you may find that by tracking which assets are breaking down at which times, you may find that that manufacturer is actually the root cause of why you're having so many uh, occurrences of whatever the problem may be, right? And so being able to establish these trends in operations and maintenance are important. Um, uh, obviously support your preventive maintenance tasks, warranty, root cause analysis, all those require a complete asset inventory and be able to identify assets as you're working on. Let's talk about energy next. First off, meters are assets. It's important to track your meters and your whole meter hierarchy just like any other asset hierarchy to know all the attributes of those meters for the purposes of maintenance but also for the purposes of knowing what those meters feed. Right? What, what is being served by those meters? So we can track things like consumption, knowing uh, the asset specs that are tied to those meters. We can do things like emissions analysis, demand load analysis, uh, and be able to get a better understanding of what combination of assets are attributing to which energy uh, loads and be able to uh, get a lot of neat, valuable information out of that. Um, it's also important to have the energy folks on the same page as the rest of the facilities, right? This is something that I see in facilities a lot that we have this uh, big beautiful energy management system that has all these meters and assets uh, stored within them and it's totally disconnected from the rest of facilities. They're not on the same page. Well it's time to bring the energy group to the table, bring them all in, right? And let's get everyone talking and communicating the same way. They're the same assets that are being dealt with, whether it be in operations and maintenance or in capital planning or in energy. So everyone should be working from the same complete asset inventory. Okay, let's talk about space management. Obviously, assets occupy space, and so they have to be located someplace. And whether you do that graphically or just track that in a database someplace is up to you to decide if there is a benefit to have that uh, graphically as well, but it's not just locating assets. It also has to do with the relationship of assets to that space or to the people who occupy that space, right? So tying assets to employees for things such as move management is very valuable, right? So assets in the form of IT assets, furniture assets, uh, whatever it happens to be, the next time that that employee leaves or that employee has to be moved, if you have a complete asset inventory that has all the linkages established, that becomes a, a pretty easy effort. Otherwise, it's very in, it's a very manual process. It's very very labor intensive, and so by having that all built up and by tracking those assets from the get go and maintaining the process just like you would any other asset, it makes those types of activities really easy. And lastly, real estate, uh, your real estate portfolio. This is pretty obvious. Uh, essentially, assets make up your real estate portfolio. That is what it is. So all your facilities, all the land, all the uh, assets and equipment within those facilities, those are all assets. And by having a complete asset inventory, 
it gives you a really good idea of exactly what you're dealing with in your entire enterprise. I like to consider the enterprise of everything that you may deal with as, as a manager that you're actually going to have to uh, maintain and track and build and work with, right? So your enterprise is made up of those assets. And so those assets could be something that's just fixed that you have to deal with, or they could be assets that you're leasing. They could be assets that you're renting out. It could be assets that you're renting from another group. And so on the real estate side, the thing to consider is where are my assets? Which are the ones that can make me money? Which are the ones that are costing me money? How can I uh, better leverage the data that I have in my asset inventory so that assets that potentially could be leased out are uh, maximizing the potential revenue that we get? Right. So there's a lot of neat things by having this asset data and having a complete uh, asset inventory. There's a lot of neat benefits that come from that uh, within your real estate portfolio. So I guess the conclusion I would make is this. It's time to get information out of everybody's head who works within facilities and into a central database, into a complete asset inventory that is being stored electronically that everyone can share. I know as I travel around, but one of the biggest topics in facilities management today is the aging workforce, right? And all the knowledge that's soon going to be walking out the door and potentially could leave a big void in your knowledge base, right? You can protect yourself by incorporating all that information that they know into this asset inventory, into an inventory database. That way, instead of having a big void, they're leaving a legacy. This will be in a, a legacy that will improve your facilities into the future. And it'll be because of the group of people that you're working with and getting that all into a complete asset inventory and getting all the attributes that they know into that inventory. It'll provide a benefit for uh, years to come. If nothing else, if none of the other pillar reasons uh, provided enough benefit, that reason alone should be an important reason why an asset inventory is crucial to the success of any facilities manager. And that's why James says... A complete asset inventory is your biggest asset.